recognized for one hour. Here for the purpose of debate only, I yield the customary 30 minutes to the distinguished gentleman from Massachusetts, my good friend, the ranking member on the Rules Committee, pending which I yield myself as much time as I may consume. During consideration of this resolution, all time yielded is for the purpose of debate only. Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent that all members have five legislative days to revise and extend their remarks. Without objection. Mr. Speaker, last night the Rules Committee met and we reported out a rule, House Resolution 260, providing for consideration of HR1, the Lower Energy Cost Act. The rule provides for consideration of HR1 under a structured rule. It provides seven hours of general debate with three hours equally divided and controlled by the chair and ranking minority member of the Committee on Energy and Commerce or their designees. Additionally, the rule provides for three hours equally divided and controlled by the chair and ranking minority member of the Committee on Natural Resources or their designees, and one hour equally divided and controlled by the chair and ranking minority member of the Committee on Transportation Infrastructure or, of course, their designees. Further, this rule makes in order 37 amendments and provides one motion to recommit. Mr. Speaker, I rise in support of this rule and in support of the underlying legislation. HR1 unleashes American energy and it immediately will lower the cost for families by resuming leases, uh, lease sales on federal lands and waters. It will repeal fee increases on energy production and it will end the moratorium on coal leasing. Additionally, HR1 strengthens America's critical mineral supply, prohibits a moratorium on hydraulic fracking, and streamlines the permitting process. Let's remember, on day number one of his presidency, day number one, President Biden launched a war on American energy. He canceled the Keystone XL pipeline, also, by the way, killing thousands, tens of thousands of union jobs. And he paused new oil and gas leases on federal lands. That was day number one. Under President Trump, the U.S. energy was, we had independence with U.S. energy, but now President Biden has drained our strategic petroleum reserve to the lowest level since 1983. That's the lowest level since I've been alive. Meanwhile, the administration is increasing regulations on domestic energy production by easing regulations and incentivizing energy production in foreign communist and authoritarian states like Venezuela. So in the words of President Biden, and I quote, climate change is the ex existential threat to humanity, end quote. Apparently that only applies when the U.S. is the one producing the oil and gas, not when nations like Venezuela, Venezuela produce the natural gas. President Trump, by contrast, opened 100 million acres of public land and water to exploration. But Biden has leased fewer than uh, fewer acres of federal land for oil and gas drilling than any president since the end of World War II. The results have directly impacted all Americans. On the day Joe Biden took office, the average price for a gallon of gasoline was $2.39. Today, the national average is, four, is $3.47. That's a 44% increase. And let's not forget June's highest rate of $5 a gallon. Due to inflation, the average American family is now paying $10,000 more in household costs under President Biden. By leaving our resources in the ground and turning to places like Russia, Iran, and Venezuela for help, Democrats are choosing to increase energy costs and risk the national security of American families. And why? It's all to appease far-left radical activists, since they, the Democrats, lack the moral clarity to do what is right for our citizens. However, Instead of focusing on lower energy costs, this administration thinks the most pressing energy issue is, and wait for it, banning our gas stoves. That's their priority. And don't take my word for it. While the administration is now gaslighting the American people saying they don't stand for this, in places like New York, New York has, stated, has already taken the lead by announcing just yesterday they will ban gas stoves in new buildings. Americans shouldn't have to choose between driving to work, paying their electric bills, or putting food on the table. We have to lower energy costs for Americans, and we have to do it now. I urge my colleagues to, to support this rule, and I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman from Pennsylvania reserves. The gentleman 